For eight years now, we've ranked the world's best passports from number 199 to number one. And today I'm gonna to tell you where the best passports are, why certain passports are better than others, including for reasons you may not think, and how you can get your hands on one of these tier A passports. A number of years ago, I had this idea that the idea of having a passport wasn't just about where you can travel. There were people who ranked passports solely based on visa-free travel, and I never liked how you'd have like 10 passports that were all ranked number two because a bunch of European passports basically have exactly the same visa-free travel. I wanted to see what do I get with my passport and take that up a level, which is to get a passport, you have to be a citizen. What does my citizenship get me? How am I represented in the world? How much freedom do I have? Because you can have a great passport for visa-free travel, but if your country says you can be drafted, well, that's a lesser passport to have than one that says you don't have to be drafted. The military is voluntary. And so we created the Nomad Passport Index, and we based it on this ranking. 50% of the score is based on where you can go, visa-free travel. So that could be uh, visa-free, where you just show up, you get a stamp. It could be visa on arrival. It could be ETA or an e-visa. And we categorized that as a process that had to be easy. There couldn't be anything uh, hinky going on. 50% for travel. 20% is for taxation, because for me, if you have a passport and you're traveling, what if you want to live overseas? We help our clients live overseas. Uh, and one of the th reasons that they want to live overseas is they want to reduce their taxes legally to as low as zero, or at least to low numbers. And some countries make that more difficult. You're a citizen, you live there, you want to leave, they make it difficult. The United States being the worst, but other countries are tightening the noose a little bit as well. Uh, perception of your country. There are certain countries that just aren't as well received. Anywhere from you get a nasty look to, you're not eligible for a residence permit, to they don't want you to do business there. That's an issue. Your passport dictates how you're received. You could be a citizen, live in your country and never leave. You don't need a passport. And so if visa-free travel matters, the rest of this matters too. Dual citizenship, can you have more than one? And what's your personal freedom within the country? And so what we came up with is for 2024, the number one best passport in the world uh, is Switzerland. Last year, the UAE made the rankings. This all comes from dozens and dozens of data sources. I felt last year that the United Arab Emirates, it met the criteria. Uh, and yet, a passport where you can't go to the United States without a visa probably wouldn't be number one for most people. Uh, this year, I think that Switzerland, it meets the criteria. Visa-free travel to 176 countries. Taxation may not be great within Switzerland if you're a Swiss citizen. Uh, but can you get out? Well, it's not the hardest system to get out of. Perception is top tier. People respect Switzerland. They love Switzerland. Dual citizenship, strong. Freedom, strong. I mean, you could argue one of the best in the Western world. So they came in at number one. The rest of the list, largely uh, European. Ireland came in at number two, largely thanks to great visa-free travel, great perception, uh, and also great taxation. Pretty clear rules in Ireland. How do you get out of the Irish tech system if you no longer want to live there? Portugal, uh, number three, strong visa-free travel, great dual citizenship, great perception. Uh, that, that did very well. Luxembourg and Finland tied for number four. They tied Switzerland for visa-free travel, 176. You can kind of see, just because you're one country lower for visa-free travel, if your country's perceived better, who's going to beef with Luxembourg? Ah, one of these Luxembourgers. I, I, Nobody's saying that. Finland, people love Finland. Uh, United Arab Emirates did come in tied for sixth. Here's why the UAE scores so high in some of these rankings. It scores highly partially because some of the people who are in the passport sales industry, are their, their headquarters are in Dubai and they need to curry favor uh, with the government. I curry favor with nobody, okay? 179 visa free travel for the UAE. Now, here's a factor that we're working on how to integrate in the future. Uh, what the UAE has done an amazing job of doing, and I, listen, I think they're one of the most forward-thinking countries out there. Not a big fan of the new 9% corporate tax. I think it's been a little bit misrepresented, not so much by the government, but by all the aforementioned companies there who are, who are desperate for business. Um, they've done a great job of going around the world and having investments, because they actually have cash. They're, they're not broke like uh, the legacy brand country that you and I are from. And so they said, hey, if we're investing in your country, uh, we want visa-free travel. 
And they've done that largely in like African countries, for example. Uh, so they have some of the best visa-free travel, even better than most African passports, to places in Africa. Now, if you had to choose, do I want to be Swiss and be able to live in Switzerland and be able to visit the United States and all the other countries that I can think of, or would I want to be Emirati and I need a visa to go to the United States, uh, but I can go to a bunch of African countries, the average person would probably rather have access to the United States. Now, the U.S. isn't always cracked up to be because you have to get an ESTA to go. And if you've ever been to Cuba, heaven forbid, uh, now you can't go to the U.S. without getting a visa. So even if you're Swiss, you could be out of the U.S. I think that, you know, having Emirati passport is very difficult. We've talked about Kevin O'Leary has got one. Uh, other billionaire investors have got one. The government has been looking to, to give those passports to very high-level investors. Uh, if you are a high-level investor, Africa should be on your radar. Uh, there's plenty of bad investments, and I think there are some good investments. Uh, so, you know, being able to go there, being welcomed there, I think, you know, being Emirati, to the extent it's very difficult uh, to be, almost impossible for you and I to be, uh, is something that will be very well respected. I'd rather be Emirati than American going forward uh, because the relations that the UAE has with so many countries are good. That's why they got into Canada visa-free, UK. I mean, Emiratis can go most places, but they can't go to the U.S. But look at how... Three more countries, according to our metric, than number one ranked Switzerland. Maybe not countries you want to go to, but countries that maybe in the future could come in handy. And I'll say this in favor of the UAE. You know, the U.S. Uh, invests money or, you know, backs uh, countries. They don't always get visa-free travel. Now, you could say they have more pressing concerns, but the UAE goes in and negotiates. Yeah, we want to be able to come to your country with our passport. That's, that's part of the deal. The U.S. doesn't really care because I don't, the UAE looks out for its citizens. The U.S. doesn't care. You're a number. They don't care about you. That's kind of the whole nature. And that, that's going to be reflected in their ranking. Uh, the Netherlands tied for sixth with the UAE, Norway, Germany, uh, and New Zealand. All very Iceland. It just goes on and on because the metrics are so similar in this kind of upper band. Iceland, Italy, Greece, all tied for sixth. And then you go to 14. Still a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, European countries in here. Uh, one thing we're looking at is how to uh, not only weight the quality of the countries in some way, uh, but also wait if you're a European Union citizen uh, of a European Union member state, uh, you can live in those other countries. And that's why many people from the UK now are saying, well, why did we do Brexit? Because we don't have the ability to live in any EU state except Ireland now. Uh, and that's one reason why uh, folks like to get European Union passports. You can do that by uh, making a donation uh, to Malta, and you can get that citizenship in about 18 months. They are tied next for 14th with Sweden, Czech Republic, and the UK. Uh, and so you can get that. You can get citizenship by descent. Nomad Capitalist helps our clients get citizenships by investment or by donation in the case of Malta. If you have someone in the family tree, uh, those are both ways you could get citizenship in a European Union member state. Uh, we help people with both of that. You can go to nomadcapitalist.com slash apply and learn more. We'd love to help you get a second passport because if you have more passports, especially in places like Europe, to a lesser extent in South America, to a lesser extent in the Caribbean region, to a lesser extent in Southeast Asia, uh, you have more options. You have more countries you can live in. And uh, if you're from the U.S., none of these countries tax you if you don't want to live there anymore. So let's look at the U.S. Where is the U.S.? Well, this year it tied at 44th. In the past, it's been 40th. It dropped a little bit this year. Uh, let's look at that band. So Australia also tied for 40th. Why? Visa-free travel, not quite as good as most of the European countries. So 172. Uh, tax system, increasingly difficult to get out of. We talked about a ruling last year. Uh, it is, as many Western tax system is, somewhat nebulous. But the overall gist is uh, you could be liable for tax if you're an Australian. Your passport will count a little bit against you. Uh, and if you don't live overseas the way that they want Australians to live overseas and live in a place long enough, eh, maybe they'll tax you, maybe they won't. And so we, we marked them down. Uh, Australia's perception, given what happened where you couldn't enter your own country, uh, that's bad. Uh, dual citizenship, they were one of the uh, later ones. I think only in 2000 did they allow that. Um, there's actually a few Australians out there who've come from other countries where you can have dual and they gave it up and now you can go back and reclaim it. So dual citizenship is good, but freedom there is, is, is not so good anymore. So Australia is tied for 40th. We're, com we're coming to the U.S., I promise. Uh, tied with Chile. Chile uh, Chileans can go to the U.S. There's some talk, will they lose that because of some Chilean gangs 
going uh, and robbing houses in Los Angeles. You know, to me, that kind of stuff just shows the U.S. and the EU and their policies. I mean, what, a couple gangs come and you're going to, I mean, you know, they talked about that with Montenegro. They talked about that with Georgia. Uh, maybe we'll pull your access to the Schengen area. Why? Because there's like, you know, 83 guys coming, uh, coming looking for jewels. Uh, you know, okay, it just shows uh, the very heavy-handed nature and maybe you don't want to be a part of that. Malaysia, tied for 40th. Uh, very similar to a country like Brazil or UAE, uh, where you need a visa to go to the U, uh, U.S., but not many other places. I think Malaysians also need a visa for Canada, but they're tied for 40th. So 168 visa-free, Nomad Capitalist Live in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur this year. We're going to be talking about all the different ways to get a second passport, including ways we don't always talk about on YouTube. There's some programs that um, obviously it has to be above board, uh, but we don't always uh, cover here. And so they're tied for 40th. You will come and see why they've got a pretty good passport. They are people who do not want to live overseas because their country is great. They love their country by and large. They may study overseas. Come and check it out for yourself. But you know, when you have people, when you have a when you have a good country that people want to return to, uh, you don't need to get that many visas. They're tied with Australia. Argentina at 43. Let's see how that works with uh, the new president. I don't see dramatic improvements in the passport, but living there could be good. So if you want to obtain that passport. It's one of the fastest ones in the world to get. Uh, and then Brazil and the U.S. tied for 44th. The U.S. has obviously terrible taxation policies. Uh, expats are taxed. The perception is, I think, getting worse in the world. We put that at a 30 out of 50. Dual citizenship is great. You can have as many passports as you want, basically. But freedom is going in the wrong direction. So the U.S. is down to 44th. Out of 199, it's obviously, you know, let's, let's not say that we hate the United States because we rank them based on dozens and dozens of data sources. Nobody's making subjective opinions of this. We're going by the data sources. Uh, freedom of speech is down in the U.S. Freedom of the press is down, like below Jamaica levels in the U.S. Uh, that all factors in. Taxation, established fact, it's bad. Uh, perception, harder to quantify, but there are indexes that look. How, how, are, how do people see countries? Down. Um, so it's not the worst. Uh, it barely beats out Uruguay, the Vatican City. You can't get that one. San Marino lived there 30 years. Andorra, is that 20 or 30 years you have to live there? St. Kitts and Nevis, you can get that. It's going to be $200,000 citizenship by investment. Uh, you can get a passport almost as good quality by our rankings as the U.S., number 50th, tied St. Kitts and Nevis. It's yours. You can go out and invest it. And again, we help our clients get citizenships in Caribbean countries that offer that in exchange for a donation. You can have your passport in less than a year. You can't go to the U.S., you can't go to Canada, you can't go to Australia or New Zealand, but you can go most other places. Um, and that's why they raise the price, to make sure they can keep uh, in the good graces of the uh, very uh, heavy-handed countries like in Europe. That's the rankings. What are the worst passports? Well, Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen, Eritrea, Pakistan, Syria, North Korea is actually 192nd out of 199. Somalia, Libya, Iran, uh, and Palestine. Those are some of the worst. Uh, even a country like uh, Egypt, they have a citizenship by investment program. That's pretty uh, kind of an off-the-wall one, but it could be interesting to some folks. Tied for 152nd. My beloved Comoros, tied for 143. Cambodia, uh, we're hearing more rumblings about citizenship, 137. You probably don't, aren't looking to get those to start. Vanuatu, not doing well in the travel rankings. It dropped barely in the top uh, 100 now. But if you look at these rankings, you'll see Countries like Serbia, Mauritius, Georgia, Colombia, places ostensibly you could get a passport. Uh, even Turkey. I mean, these are in the 60s to 80s. You can get those in the case of Turkey, another passport by investment. Um, I mean, there are passports that when you look at the rankings, they're actually not that much worse because having a passport means having everything that comes with it. It's not just the good parts. It's the net net, the net worth of passports. Uh, and so Switzerland, most people would not turn down a Swiss passport. Uh, they just would not. Um, U.S., I know people who actively, we have someone who works for us uh, from Venezuela. Uh, you lived in the U.S. for 15 years. Did you get a passport? Nah, I didn't really want that U.S. passport. Um, so that is an increasingly part of uh, the perception. How do you get these? Well, in Switzerland, it's tough. You live there for 12 years and you have to be accepted. Ireland, you live there for five years. Relatively easy to immigrate there if you have some kind of business uh, or you can get a job. 
Um, so Ireland's easier. Portugal has a golden visa program as well as other programs, self-sufficient visas. Luxembourg has a, a golden visa program, a very little discussed golden visa program. We, we, we never really, we'll be talking about that at Nomad Capitalist Live for about 60 seconds, Luxembourg. You can ask our team about it during the mingling. Finland, hard to go to. UAE, easy enough to be a resident, hard to be a citizen, practically impossible. Uh, become a billionaire and, uh, or, or have a big TV show and they might give it to you. Uh, the Netherlands move there, but very tax unfriendly. So, I mean, the standout here is Ireland. Uh, move to Ireland, spend five years. If you've made it this far, how many minutes are we in so far? 15 minutes. If you've made it this far, you speak English. I think Ireland, I don't, if, if they even have a language test, they were one of the last countries, they were the last country in Europe to add one, but you'll pass it if you're still with me. Uh, so the number two passport, five years of living there. Uh, a little bit more flexible, I think, in time on the ground than, let's say, the UK, which was like, like nine months. Uh, that's the best passport for your buck. No language requirement because you already speak English. Uh, it's number two. It's the shortest period of time. And it has uh, tax friendliness for new arrivals, which Portugal no longer does. Uh, Luxembourg is more friendly for companies than it is for individuals. The UAE is friendly for individual taxation, but you're not going to work towards naturalization. None of the rest of these countries, until you get to Italy, are tax friendly and their passport takes 10 years to get and you would need to learn some Italian. Greece generally doesn't naturalize people. Malta, if you can get it by making a do donation, it's gonna cost you about a million dollars with fees. We've got more people than ever doing that program because they just wanna get to like, the best passport they can get right away. Um, so Ireland, if you wanna move. Malta, if you don't wanna move. I think we've got very extensive uh, expertise here on Ireland because uh, if you want that tax friendliness, it takes some coordination. Malta, less so. But that's what we're here for at Nomad Capitals. We help people find the best second passports. A lot of companies, they have five Caribbean passports or they'll do you know, a couple of their favorites. We've helped people get dozens and dozens of different uh, passports in all different ways. Citizenship by descent through your ancestry, citizenship by investment where you make a donation, some of the hybrid programs in Europe, uh, all sorts of different ways to naturalization different ways to become a citizen. If you want actual advice from an unbiased source that represents your best interests and can also make a holistic plan for your taxes, your banking, your asset protection, well, then you've come to the right place. Go to nomadcapitalist.com slash apply. Uh, while you're on nomadcapitalist.com, you can get a copy of the Nomad Passport Index. Learn how we can help you get the best passport that actually works for you. Because for some people, they just want a tax-friendly island that they're a citizen of, that they can always just say, hey, I'll, I'll go to my own country and pay zero tax, St. Kitts and Nevis. For you, number 50 could be the best one. Maybe you don't have to spend a million dollars. Maybe you don't have to spend five years living somewhere. Maybe you don't have to learn a new language. That's what we help you figure out with unbiased advice. <laughs>